The human species has been documenting and photographing space since the dawn of civilization, with cave drawings and ancient murals detailing what we saw in the night sky, dating back thousands of years. Then came the invention of the camera obscura, the idea of which had been developed over 1,500 years by countless engineers from around 400 BC to 1,800 AD. Its main purpose was to allow people to view a solar eclipse without damaging their eyes, connecting cameras with astronomy long before telescopes were launched into space. On October 24, 1946, scientists attached a motion picture camera to a V-2 missile, shot it 65 miles above Earth, and captured the first ever photograph taken in space. 26 years later, on December 7, 1972, the blue marble image was taken, and for the first time, human eyes saw the full Earth from the point of view of the cosmos. In the years since, both astronomical and photographic technology has soared past expectations, and we've been able to capture events such as the first ever picture of a black hole, and our understanding of the universe clears up that much more. Then on Christmas Day 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope was launched, and when the first few photos were released seven months later, in July of 2022, the way we see and analyse our universe was changed forever. Thus here are four of the craziest images since released by NASA, all captured by the brilliant behemoth known as the James Webb Telescope. On July 12th, 2022, at precisely 11.22 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, NASA unveiled a series of images taken by the James Webb Telescope, all titled Cosmic Cliffs in the Carina Nebula. While the James Webb currently rests in a halo orbit set along the Sun-Earth L2 Lagrange point, or 930,000 miles, or 1.5 million kilometers above Earth's own orbit around the Sun. These visuals are found a whopping 7,600 light-years away from Earth, right at the edge of a massive gas-filled pocket inside NGC 3324. NGC 3324 is an open cluster, a part of the constellation colloquially known as Carina. It contains a radius of nearly 15 light years and has been around for just over 12 million years, relatively young when compared to other open clusters around the cosmos. The gaseous chamber dug out from the main nebula seen in the awe-striking image actually evolves from the dramatic ultraviolet radiation and powerful stellar winds given off by the immature hot stars at the centre of the cavity, just north of the frame off-screen. Due to the high energy output of radiation by these cosmic elements, the wall of the nebula at large is still being carved away, like water eroding the sides of a hollow rock on the ocean's shore. With the newfound sensitivity and powerful clarity provided by the James Webb Telescope, astronomers wanted to capture exactly what the Carina Nebula's cavity looked like, and in the process found what appeared to be mountain ranges stretching across the bubble with a host of hidden stars and galaxies revealed in the background. That being said, the beautiful colours and shapes you see are surely no mountains, but a combination of the absolute chaos happening within Carina. Rather, what appears to be an avalanche of dust or smoke pluming from the so-called mountains is actually the ionised gas and other particles being eroded from the nebula in real time, due to the aforementioned ultraviolet radiation. At the top of the mountain peaks are pillars that have thus far fought against the radiation of the temperamental stars positioned above the image. And at the bottom, stellar winds blow away the gas and dust completely, by way of more radiation. In addition, one can see the golden jets and outflows of protostellar objects throughout the image, 
all products of dust-covered stars in their early phases of forming. NASA also captured a second image of the cosmic cliffs on Carina Nebula. This one a composite of infrared light captured by both the near-infrared camera and the mid-infrared instrument. The resulting image is more or less the same as the first, but with a darker foreground as if it was lit by moonlight. Both photographs are absolutely masterclasses of vividity and colour in space and are also massive objects when set to scale. Just an inch or two on your screen represents two light years, or around 12 trillion miles or 18 trillion kilometers of distance in the universe. Much closer than the cosmic cliffs is Coldwell 74, an eight-burst nebula, also called the Southern Ring Nebula, or NGC 3132. The Southern Ring is positioned just around 2,000 light-years from Earth, located within the constellation Vela. Both the constellation and the planetary nebula have been studied for decades, specifically for the intense brightness they wield, in addition to the White Dwarf sitting at the lower left portion of the Southern Ring. The White Dwarf in question displays a few characteristics to the star at the centre of our own solar system, just an aged and shredded version of the Sun. In other words, the White Dwarf shows us what might happen to our own central star when it breaks from its outer layers and there is no more fuel to burn via nuclear fusion. Luckily, with the launch of the James Webb Telescope, we've garnered our best ever look at such a fascinating process. The resulting images are incredibly rich photographs of the Southern Ring Nebula shining faintly, with the expelled layers and sheaths of gas dispersed around the White Dwarf to create the iconic rings it is now associated with. The left photo of the nebula was taken by James Webb's near-infrared camera. In this shot, the White Dwarf is hidden by a diffraction spike, but a much better look at the star itself can be seen in the right photo, taken by the mid-infrared instrument. The dense concentration of dust, gas, and other particles shroud the White Dwarf, which in turn makes the star appear bigger than in reality. The other star in the nebula is a much brighter star, one that hasn't undergone the shredding of layers like the White Dwarf. However, it does orbit the White Dwarf in question, and is the vehicle through which the surrounding dust ejects and dissipates to form the ethereal images we see now. The dust then takes its shape from thousands of years of mass ejections being contracted, heated, and pulsated in a continuous cycle. These patterns date back long before the White Dwarf started phasing out, and has led to the unique visuals we are now graced with. The difference between the photographs is related to the wavelengths of light scattered by each instrument. The near-infrared captures visible wavelengths that most closely resemble the human eye's ability to capture. The mid-infrared can delve deeper into the infrared waves, detecting the softly illuminated dust swirling around the stars and giving us a better image of the second host star. It can also help us see the asymmetrical belt at the centre of the nebula, the place where the two bowl shapes of the structure meet in the middle. It comes in the form of a yellow circle surrounding the central star. Regardless, it's quite thrilling to think how our star will undergo the same processes in a few billion years, giving whoever is around to experience it an already proven masterpiece. Another one of the first images released by the James Webb Telescope was one of the largest photographs ever assembled, giving astronomers a grandiose look at Stefan's Quintet, a cluster of five galaxies also referred to as Higson Compact Group 92. The photo you see would cover about one-fifth of the Moon's diameter in its actual size, and consists of more than 1,000 individual pictures and a whopping 150 million pixels. The galaxies themselves are NGC 7320 on the leftmost side, with NGC 7317, 18A, 18B, 
and 19 remaining close together in the cluster. 7320 is located only 40 million light years away from us on Earth, but the other four are actually nearly 300 million light years into the cosmos. James Webb allowed researchers to take photos with more detail attributed to the Quintet than any other telescope in history. Most notably, the telescope was able to detect the shock waves between galaxies as 7318b's impact with the others is still relatively fresh. The first of the two Quintet pictures is a composite of both the near and mid-infrared instruments to highlight the dust and structures of each galaxy whereas the second photo is just the mid-infrared images to pinpoint where large hydrocarbon molecules are residing in the cluster, as well as in the ancient galaxies scattered in the background. The most exciting prospect for astronomers moving forward is their ability to now study how colliding galaxies interact with one another, how these collisions force other galaxies to form new stars and how often these types of clusters dotted the cosmos in its ancient and early formation. With such a detailed portrait, it won't be long before scientists are piecing together more of the puzzle regarding the creation of the universe, and how exactly we, and the billions of other galaxies that exist, got here in the first place. The James Webb could also help astronomers unlock new information regarding black holes and how they interact with galaxy clusters, as the centre of 7319 is a supermassive black hole pulling in surrounding particles, also called an active galactic nucleus. Last but not least is the first image unveiled by NASA and the President of the United States on July 12, 2022, officially titled, Webb's First Deep Field. The image depicts SMACS 0723, a galaxy cluster located in the constellation of Volans, some 4.24 billion light years from Earth when viewed from our southern hemisphere. The photo in question isn't even the first ever captured of the deep field around 0723. The Hubble telescope snapped a fairly similar photo, albeit with much less detail than the James Webb image. The new one is so pivotal to the history of astronomy as the newfound capabilities of the near-infrared camera is allowing researchers to visualise some of the oldest galaxies ever discovered across the observable cosmos. What makes this possible is a rule of physics that might be more mind-blowing than the original image, called gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is the natural process of intense levels of gravity bending the light produced behind whatever object emits this gravity, as per the laws of general relativity first theorised by Albert Einstein. In the case of SMACS 073, those superluminous elliptical galaxies in the centre of the web image, and the little white galaxies dotted throughout the background, are what's causing the gravitational lensing. The masses of these galaxies are so great, they begin to warp with the dark matter that consists of large portions of the universe. This relationship then bends space-time itself, becoming a cosmic telescope, as NASA puts it magnifying and mirroring the way we see and interpret galaxies, while allowing us to see things we never have before. The reason this is so vital is the same reason for a few of the other photos produced by the James Webb Telescope. With this new mode of studying ancient and distant galaxies, astronomers can paint a better picture of how our universe formed galaxies and their host stars in the first few years of existence. Scientists can also research the life form of dying stars and exploded galaxies that still produce light from 13 plus billion years ago. Understanding where we come from is the ultimate mystery yet to be uncovered. Obviously the unveiling of a few images from an expensive telescope isn't going to answer the biggest question of all, but it can direct us in the right direction and if anything, remind us that so much more beauty and brilliance exists in life, not on Earth, but upwards, 
dancing amongst the stars.